Hey, Arjun, how's it going? Good. Are you guys fun? Awesome, awesome. So this is the MMA India show with Praveen Dabas, and we are live with Arjun Singh Bhulut. Thank you for coming on the show again. It's always a pleasure having you. No problem. Always a pleasure being here and connecting with you. Great. So congrats on your big win against Marcelo Go. Uh, now you seem determined, alert, but also careful not to overcommit. But you know what I found really interesting is you seem you you were playing, you were fighting with a very clear head. You know, it, it, it seemed you were focused, but you didn't carry any baggage from the previous fight. So you learned from it, but without it being like, oh, you know, I, I can't make these same mistakes again. So that's what I found really, really good. And, 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 and interesting is, you know, that uh, focus, but not the over eagerness to win of having to prove a point. Yeah, no, um. You just nailed it. I don't, I don't, I don't ever need to prove anything to anyone. Yeah. I don't need to prove a point to anybody. I, I do this for myself. Um, and I have a, a process, you know, in terms of baggage, I have a process, you know, when you have a setback or even when you have a victory, you, there's always things to learn. Um, and you, you learn what you have to and you throw it away. Um, so you, you don't have baggage. Otherwise, just like you said, you walk around with that bag of bricks on your back and then heavy weight. And you see people, you know, day-to-day -day life, you know, hanging their head low and, you know, stress or more. And eh, life's too short to live like that. Yeah. When move is now, enjoy life daily. Um, I'm, I'm very happy and grateful for, for having the opportunities I have. And, um, and and that's what it was. My preparation was great. Um, and then it was a matter of executing. And um, like you said, you know, um, and, and as I like to compete, I compete with a clear head. Um and it was a little more focused for that clear head this time as well, um, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you obviously you're going in there with a game plan. You're going in there um, to win. And you're not going to be too eager either because you have to let the flight play itself out. Um, otherwise, that's when you make mistakes when you force things. And he was a game opponent. So um, it made for a good fight. Great. Now, talking about the game plan, you said in a post-fight interview that you came ready with a plan, but Marcelo made some changes. I'm paraphrasing here. And you readjusted. Can you can you give us some details about that now, especially since the fight is over, about what was the game plan? What was it about Marcelo that you, you know, you guys had all studied that you wanted? What was the game plan? And what did he do a little differently that you had to readjust for? Yeah, the game plan was, you know, uh, looking at his uh, past fights, he did not like getting backed up. He did not like being uh, pressured. Um, and he did not. He did not like um, being uncomfortable for long stretches of time. Um, so that was that. That that works for me. Um, I like going forward. I like coming with pressure punches um, into my wrestling. Uh, I like you know making forcing guys to work heavy work weight. You know, AKA style. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, it, it was it was good in that regard. Um, you know, a few things that you know that I give credit for. One, he was a big, strong dude. Um, he, because he's young, and you, when you're young in, in your career, you, you improve fight on over fight more than you would if you're you know been in for three fights and you know uh, on the back end of your career. Um, so he, he, he went down to ATT. Um, he made some adjustments uh, against the fence um, in terms of a clinch work, um, and and he did better off his back foot. Uh, he never showed that. That's a new wrinkle. Um, although I was, I was looking to walk him down and, and, and hunt him, um, he did well being off back foot and staying active. Uh, that being said, um, so I felt I was in control of the entire fight. I picked my spots. Um, I chose when, when to engage, when not to engage. Um, you know, side from his leg kicks, he, he landed one knee, um, and there's no other spikes. Uh, I controlled the clinch work. I took him down. So, I mean, it was a very clear-cut uh, victory, um, and, and I, I like that because, um, like I said, because he made those those changes, it it, uh, it forced me to be uh, a to show a higher caliber of fighter than I am, in which people were able to see. Now, what did you learn from your last fight? Where did you think? I, I and I know these are split decision things. You can't 
overthink them or overanalyze them sometimes you know you just it, it just happens and you walk into a a, a, a a trap or you know it's a split second decision but is there did you uh, relook at the fight and and did you think there's something that you learned from it or wanted to do differently uh, uh, you know basically you know what i'm asking did you analyze it and and, and you know try to learn or or uh, uh, you know, see, this is what, you know, you did wrong and, and this is what you need to, you know, be careful of going forward. For sure. We analyze the, the, uh, every fight. Uh, you analyze the pros and the cons. Yeah. Uh, even in victory, even in my last fight, even in my first fight, even in my first fight ever. Um, there's all these things that you've done well and you have to celebrate that and things you need to improve on because perfection is what you chase. Although it's never there, that's what you chase. Um, and that's what, that gives you purpose in training. So, you know, in the, in the last fight, um, we did things great. You know, we were, the stand-up was going our way. Again, every, every set of that fight, I was winning. Um, and then, you know, I got caught at the end there. So, there were positives, uh, definitely in that fight. Um, and, you know, if, if you look at that, if you look at all three fights, there's always been, there's always going to be some kind of adversity. The UFC is the best of the best. Someone always brings something to the table. My first fight, my adversity was I knocked him down and got very excited. And that energy dump, um, you know, made me really uh, dig deep for the third round. That was the um, adversity there, and I passed. Um, the second fight, the adversity was a submission, um, and it didn't go my way. And the, the, the learning curve there was it was a mental thing. I didn't respect what he had. It was going too comfortable for me. Um, if that can even be the excuse, you know, that, that shows that you're, you're doing things right if it's going too well for you, I kind of let up, um, and I was thinking, ah, you know, there's nothing there, and, and, and that sort of thing until there was. So it, the lesson to be learned is, is always respect your opponent, um, no matter what, until the competition's over, belt to belt. Um, you, you, while you're in battle, you have to have utmost respect. And those are the rules of engagement, whether you're at war, um, whether you're, you know, in battle one-on-one, -on -one, those are the rules of engagement. Always have respect for your uh, opponent, and I, I, I committed that sin. Not paying for it. Um, and then the adversity of this fight was uh, dealing with the leg kicks. Um, and, you know, we, we passed that. So at, every time there's going to be something, that's what experience is about. That's what your road to being the best is about. Um, and uh, and I'm happy with uh, the last performance and, and how we dealt with our first setback. It, it, it's been great. And you did check his kicks really well, uh, you know, uh, and you uh, uh, you know, you you uh, withstood that. You know, like you said, and I think did he end up breaking his a uh, 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 foot because it was pretty swollen later on. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's from the leg check, so I checked them. Yeah. Um, and you know, as you as you know, as any any anyone that in the sport knows, that's the defense to whip. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so oh, he's worse for the wear. That's why he broke his foot. Um, kept throwing it. Uh, I, I guess when when you when you're desperate and. Uh, other things aren't going your way. You keep going to that one thing that might might work for you, and that's maybe the place he was at. Because he wasn't out striking me in, in any other any other place. He wasn't gonna out grapple me. Um, so what else could he do? Was keep me out of range, keep me out of range, and and and, and hope that um, pain gets to me or, or what have you. But that wasn't about to happen. And um, and yeah, that's why he has a broken foot. Yep. Now. Uh, uh, talking about the future, you know, you did, of course, talk about, you know, why wouldn't you want to be on the Toronto card? And, you know, your fans from Brampton would come up. But, of course, you know, that is up to the, you know, UFC to schedule. Hey, you know what Brampton is, right? Come yeah, on. Of course. Now, we <laughs> yeah, they would, they would come so, out. They would come out. You know, yeah. and, you, and you would think that you have, you know, of course, we're going to talk about their plans for India later on. But you would think that is where you know, a large part of the Indian audience is, so they would want you on that card to bring those Indian fans out. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm the athlete, I guess. And, um, and, not, I'm just, not, and, and not just I'm Brampton, not, but there's a lot of them in Mississauga as well. Brampton, Mississauga, you know, that whole area is full of uh, Indians. 100%, there's enough room to fill up that entire arena. Yeah. Um, I'm not paying the big bucks to, to think from that angle and make those decisions. I'm the athlete. Um, like I said, they asked me, and, and that's anyone, anyone can think of that. That's it's it's not it's not rocket science. Yeah. I mix it up. But to be honest, um, they offered that 
um, as well before uh, New Brunswick. They're like, hey, we want you on a Canadian card. I uh, wanted Calgary and Toronto. It would be perfectly spaced out, um, but Calgary wasn't in the deck, so it was either New Brunswick or Toronto, and I didn't want to wait until December to get going again. Okay. I wanted to go as early as possible. Yeah. Um, so that's what jumped on New Brunswick. Um, but Toronto would be amazing, and I had planned on being there anyways um, and connecting with, uh, with the community on the ground. Um, so it'll be it'll be a lot of fun, and and, and I and I hope the next map up is um, I, like I said we don't we are paid to make those decisions, but uh, we will plant the seeds for the next fight. And make sure we're in a good hub to to, to maximize uh, approach and profile. Now now talking about the way forward, you know you're three fights down. You're in a you're in a pretty good position of seeing where you want to go from here and which fight or fighting who makes sense for you going forward because every fight now is a step forward you know it's it's uh, of course it still may not be in your hands but is, is there somebody you have in mind and is there of course uh, a, a road map of how many fights to a championship title or is that you know still some time away so are you still focusing it on it fight per fight and seeing who makes sense now you know now that you're three fights down yeah both both uh, obviously the goal is the title that's why i'm in this form that's why i'm in the league um you know, every day I train, and, and uh, I I train like I am getting ready for that title. Uh, I want my skills to be at that level, um, and and I dissect the you know top five accordingly. Hey, I'll beat that guy this way. That person has holes this way. We need to get sharper in this area to beat that person, etc. Um, so that's always on the radar. Um, but but to get there on the way there, you have to pass tests. Yeah. Um, that's you know you're not going to be championship ready today. Everyone goes through that process. Um, so we, there's opponents along the way that will get ready, get get us ready for that. Um, and I will discuss that with my coaches and management. I, to be honest, we have it. We didn't we didn't look past Marcelo Gomi. You're crazy if you look past a guy like that. Yeah, of course. He was highly coming out of Brazil. Um, you know, the next big thing out of Brazil, um, all that stuff. So it was, it was very dangerous to overlook someone like that. Um, so I I'm going to take this week. Um, you know celebrate, enjoy, spend time with my family, that type of thing, and then we will look ahead um, uh, at the next opponent. But, you know, like you said, it's got to be someone that takes me a, a step up, a step close, and a step up every time. Um, every fight is important. This one's important. The next one will be important. My first one is important. Um, every single fight is important. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't have an answer for you in terms of a name right now, but it will be someone that gets me closer to my end goal. Now, now talking about family, you know, if, if you don't mind us talking about it, if it, it's, it, 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 how does it, I mean, apart from time management, because it's very different, of course, being a single dude and training and doing whatever you want and having a family, child, it, 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 it's, a, a, you know, the, is it about time management now? Is that what it's about? And of course, you know, enjoying your family life, like you just said, but training as well, is it just now you've made time slots? Is, is that how uh, uh, it's working now? It's a lot of things. It's priority, it's time management, it's sacrifice, um, and not just me, like I said, the, the entire unit. Um, and it begins and ends with my wife, to be quite honest. Um, we've got a seven-month-old, and she's been tremendous um, in terms of, of, of just taking that on and, and taking her on, um, just so I can focus on, on, on my training full-time and make sure about this last W, which I've done and. and over this next little while, I'll be paying that back <laughs> as much as I can. Um, but it, it, that's that's what it is. You know, I, I sat down, we're doing this together. We're building our future, our, our life together. We have plans um, that, hey, this is what's needed. And, and, you know, this is this is what's needed in terms of day-to-day. This is what's needed week-to-week, um, et cetera. So we're on the same page. Uh, and I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have that support. Um, I've got a loving family, a uh, roof over our head, food on the table. Um, healthy, happy, not much else you can ask for. Um, I'm very grateful for the position I'm in to be able to focus on this uh, wholeheartedly because you have to do that if you want to be the best number. Now, now, talking about family, I have to, you know, please give my regards to your parents, <laughs> you know, mom and dad, especially. Especially, I have to tell them because I met your dad when you guys were in Mumbai. What a great guy he is. And of course, you know, it's, it, it, it you know, every great athlete, you know, has the parent, you know, uh, behind him as inspiration. You've grown up watching him he he's still so fit you know and an, i'm sure an inspiration to uh, follow even now and you know the genesis of where you got into kushti watching him you know and it's so great 
Then even after coming over, he kept those roots and the Kushli roots and, uh, 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 you know, kept it alive, you know, uh, uh, while you were growing up, while he was, you know, working in uh, Canada and made it a part of your lives while you were uh, there. So, you know, our, you, you know, regards to him in that uh, regard. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, you just nailed it. I think I, what excites me about that is I want that story to really get out there so people can understand that is the opportunity for this sport to expand in the country. Uh, for India, it's going to be those Kushti roots, the wrestling, uh, grassroots, um, theater system. It's, it, that's where all the U.S. stars are coming. You look at all the champions, they're all wrestlers. Yeah. Um, so it, it, for this sport to take off, there is the infrastructure already in place and a culture and a history in India for that wrestling. And that's what excites me for, for, for this to take off in the future. And I want to be a part of that because I come from that. Uh, absolutely. Now, uh, just uh, uh, now you also, uh, uh, I, I don't want to use the word attack, but you also spoke about your detractors, you know, from the last uh, uh, fight. Now, were you targeting trolls in general or somebody in specific? And, and, and don't you think, you know, this is maybe just my personal opinion that, you know, whenever, uh, 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 you know, the fight doesn't go your way, there will be a section of people, you know, especially in our country, who always jump off the boat and immediately jump back on uh, uh, when you start winning. You know, so is it? Yeah. Is it? So Sorry, I was calling my laptop, trying to say one sec. No, right. Yeah, uh, it, it was, you know what, I don't want to get too much energy to the negative. Yeah, um, you know, that, that's what I mean. Is it, is it necessary to address that at all? That's what I'm asking. It, you know what, it is and it isn't. I mean, it isn't because why feed... Uh, energy towards something like that, but it is because hopefully others can can you know uh, take some cues. You know, for me, I, it blows my mind. I, I was never on social media before this sport. Even going to the Olympics, I never had social media accounts. Yeah. As soon as I got into this sport, like you have to be on this, and this is the new wave, and that's that's the reason really why I stayed away from it. People who are accountable online. They can say whatever the heck they want, pretend to be whatever professionals, and no. You know, people tell me how to train and how to get ready and like, what? Are you, is they coming to my house and telling me that? Like, yeah. don't, I mean, unless I ask you, yeah. don't have to tell me what to do. I don't even know you. I don't tell you what to do. Yeah. So why do you, do you think uh, you can, you have the right to tell me anything? Yeah. It just blows my mind. Um, it's just an accountability piece, I think, what it is. And then, yeah, obviously, there's a trolls. And some of actually that stuff I kind of have fun with because I told them that. Yeah. Um, but uh, as I get that. But uh, it, it just blows my mind. You know, humans are weird people, man, and uh, you see them all online. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, now coming to something a little more positive about your mentor, who is now, uh, if I can call him like a, a mentor, you know, DC Daniel Cormier. You know, you spoke, you've spoken he, about he's earlier. Just, you know, that title for sure. Yes. Yeah. So he's going to be defending his title, uh, his heavyweight title. Uh, this week, uh, this weekend, it's this weekend, right? Yeah, this weekend at uh, uh, you know UFC 230 against Derek Lewis. Now, uh, uh, first of all, it's a really strange fight according to me because it's two guys with such strong personalities, but very positive personalities. It's not the usual fight where you have two diff you know very strongly divided camps. You know, they both respect each other and both are such strong personalities, though though different. You know, they're very different. You know, DC, of course, grinds it out. Derek, of course, can, you know, pop something out of nowhere, you know, like his last fight. So, you, you know, and, and we've recently, of course, seen a DC talking about Derek and how much he respects him as well. Uh, you know, what is your take on this fight? And do you think sometimes when there is less animosity, does it take away from the viewer interest? And does that help? Of course, you know, we all know it helps. We saw Khabib uh, 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 and uh, Connor. But, you know, this is still a great fight, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, like we said, you know, uh, Derek wants to, you know, finish it. Daniel uh, uh, would want to grind it out. Is that what it is? You know, and what's your take on, on, on the upcoming fight and, and, and things happening around you, it as well? You missed one key thing. Yeah. They both love fried chicken as well. Absolutely. And... And Derek Lewis just started promoting Popeye's chicken. You know, they gave him a deal and he's on Insta now, 
promoting, <laughs> pro, and which I think is awesome. You know, it's it's such a a nice different take to the MMA fighters from what we usually see. And it's you know he's such a great guy. You know, we've seen him helping uh, uh, hurricane victims, uh, Derek, and you know, in all of the stuff he says, he can say anything, and that's what people love about him. Yeah, he, he, he's being real. That's who he is, and, and you gotta respect that. Um, it is it like you said? They're both two positive guys, and it's a good breath of fresh air, especially after the chaos of, of, of Connor and Khabib, and just Connor in general. Yeah, that's what yeah. he brings. Yeah. Um. So it, it, it's good. You can't. Although we as humans, we're, we're very animalistic. We like chaos. We are drawn to that. So yes, there will be less interest because of that. But both guys are being real. They can't fake um, being that way. Yeah. Um, so it, it's good because not everyone can be can be a corner and, and, and do that. Um, so um, it, 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 I think it's perfect timing. And I think it's a good change up, uh, a good look for the sport. I'm um, going to New York, get, get DC, include a you know, clean cut guy, represent your sport, two to two weight champ, properly interviews, don't have to worry about uh, any buses in, in New York when he's fighting. Um, you know, all that type of stuff. He, he carries himself properly. So it, it's going to be not only our personality is great, uh, but it's going to be a good fight. You know, it's going to be a it's going to be a cool fight. Derek Lewis finds a way to win. He's won nine of his last ten. Um, although he's been all on his feet several times with several guys, um, he finds a way. Yeah. Um, and you have to respect that. And I think the way DC is going to respect him is just to keep him on his ass. Now, uh, do you think DC is ever going to go back down to lightweight and fight Jones? I know there must be a lot of locker room talk, so to speak. So do you have any insight on that that you can share? I don't. He wins this next fight. I don't think he goes back, back down. I think Jones comes back up. Uh, or does it come, not uh, doesn't come back up, but back comes up. up. Okay. Uh, say this doesn't go as anticipated. He still has his light heavyweight title. Jones beats Gustafson. They fight for the light heavyweight title. I think that's the way the two scenarios play out. If, if, if Jones loses to Gustafson, I don't even think DC needs to consider Jones. Uh, I think you just fight Lesnar and, and ride yourself off into the sunset with a big beef face of money. Awesome. Now, now, can you tell us a little about the mood and atmosphere in, in AKA right now? Because, you know, you've got two newly crowned champions in DC and, and Khabib. So it must be like a lot of positive energy and and that must lift everybody up who's there training. For sure, you know, I, I was there for uh, for the first half of my camp while Khabib was getting ready for Connor. Yeah. It was a tremendous uh, environment to be in. Big fight coming up. Khabib's getting ready. Got a bunch of Russians in the room. Everybody else is on point, uh, focused. There's a purpose to training, um, and it's the highest level. You know, the time I was there before that, it was the biggest fight in the history of the sport. DC was getting ready for Stipe. He's coming up from right heavyweight to heavyweight to fight for the heavyweight title. Never been a biggest fight in history. Yeah. I go back now again, and Khabib's getting ready for calling the biggest fight in UFC history. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so it's it's pretty cool to be involved with that uh, and be around that. Um, and then you know to have the AK guys come on on top, uh, just to cheer you on top, because um, you know kind of what it takes to be a champion at that level. Um, what they do for training, how they carry themselves inside and outside of training. Um, what you have to do to put yourself through all that. Um, there's no guesswork, you know, it's, it's, it's all there. Um, and, and, you know, I, I was, the first time I went to AKA was for DC's first fight against Jones. I was brought in for that. Um, and I remember them talking about the dead. They used to call themselves the Four Kings. It was King, Luke, DC, and Khabib. And they were supposed to hold four different titles at the same time at the UFC. Um, and although it didn't play out at the same time, they all got their titles. Um, and it's pretty cool to see that no other gym in the history of the sport had to make claim to that. Then, yeah. uh, now, what is your take, of course, on the Khabib Connor aftermath, I would call it? Now, and, and I also ask you in the uh, 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 you know context of what the UFC usually, what it seems like, likes to do is, you know, this stuff plays out. It's not like they have anything to do with it. Then they let it die down for some time, and then they use it in the promotions for the next fight, you know, like with the Connor bus trolley thing. You know, what's your view of, of course, first of all, you know, the fight, Khabib was overworked. He, Connor had been saying a lot of stuff. Was there, what, you know, you guys must be talking at AKA afterwards or, you know, exchanging stuff. You know, what's your view of that fight? 
What did you think uh, uh, Khabib was right in jumping the the fence? Was it just a on the spur moment? So you know you can't control those things. Was he pushed too far? And do you think you know the UFC should be a little more proactive in not letting it reach that point, like not using you know Connor's you know attack on the bus to to use that? So you know it's hard to for them to then say anything to Khabib. Because they were using that stuff in the promotional material, you, you know. So, yeah. So. You know, that's, that's mode of function. You know, obviously, um, you know, first and foremost, uh, the UFC doesn't want that happening because there's a lot of, you know, the sport already has that type of stereotype that they go, yeah. they fight in the cage, da da da. Especially in New York, that was the last state to get regulated. They barely got into that state. Yeah. Um, they don't want that happening for sure. And, and, you know, they had extra security heading into that fight for a reason and kept them separate. Even when I was in London, Arthur Lobov didn't stay where the rest of the fighters are, you know, uh, because of those reasons. They didn't want nothing to happen. So they are taking precautions for sure. But if it does happen, yeah. end of the day, it talks. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, it is the fight business. We're not in, you know, volleyball or something. Um, you know, they're going to use that and try to make money off it. Um, doesn't matter what Dana says. He never said there would be women in the UFC. He yeah. never said Ben Askren would be in the UFC. Yeah. And all those things happen. Um, so that, that, that's sort of how I, I believe the business works. Um, but um, in terms of it, how that went down and my feelings towards it, you know, Khabib is a desi banda. Yeah. You, you cannot talk about family. You cannot talk about you know, religion, belief systems. Yeah. You cannot talk about... Um, you know, those, those type of personal things. There's nothing else left. Connor knew what he was doing. He did his research. Yeah. He knew how he was talking him. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it was first. There was nothing left. The last thing he could talk about was maybe his wife, his mother, his, you know, his kid. Uh, that, that was for it. He talked about his country. He talked about his police system. He talked about his father. He talked about, you know, any offer of alcohol. Um, you know, all that type of stuff. So knowing all that, you cannot, if Connor's doing that, he does a lot of things. And last incident, is that uh, promotion? Like, you can't say it's all promotion. At what point does it cross a line? Uh, you know, so it could be promotion in some people's eyes, but meanwhile, it was personal. Uh, and he was motivated to train because of that. He, all he kept telling him was, I'm going to humble him. Uh, so that's sort of what happened. Uh, that being said, his promotion still goes over to the cage. Uh, they didn't bail him down his face. <laughs> um, you know, but things happen, um, and, and he is human. If you look at his history beyond the fifth corner, he was of utmost respect for the opponent and then the interview, um, all that. So, and, and I think he was genuinely apologetic for showcasing that side of him, but he wasn't apologetic of reacting in that manner because he was being true for who he was, was first. Yeah. Now, uh, there's one question. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of other stuff people are writing, which we... Uh, uh, already uh, 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 talked about, uh, but Mandy Boyd has just asked, did you ever train with Cain Velasquez? Yeah, for sure. I, I've trained with him many times, almost every time I've been down there. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the UFC in India, what do you think is the biggest uh, 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 thing, you know, stopping them from, you know, because it doesn't seem like they're going to, there's no immediate plans. If somebody was going to come into the country in the next six months to a year, we would, you know, know about it. And uh, what do you think is the, is the biggest uh, uh, thing keeping them from entering the Indian market as of now? Uh, fan engagement. They have a process. Um, they look at what, what kind of fan engagement is, is in that country. And obviously, the af do they have an athlete, which they have, yeah. and then they jump into the market. Um, they will be in the country in 12 to 18 months. That is my belief. Okay. Um, they're not there. It's not going to happen within six months. 12 to 18 months, they'll be in the country. Uh, but the fans are going to show up and, and let them know that we're, we're ready for this product, that, that we want this in the country, um, all that stuff. Um, you know, first UFC gym is opening in a couple of weeks here. Uh, so the last step um, beyond that is basically a live event. And they will be keeping... Uh, track of, even you know, if you look at my plate, um, the UFC social media accounts, they, they post it quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so they look at that, how many fans engaged on those posts from India. 
Yeah. Um, they, I'm sure they look at how does your CGM opening close over. Yeah. Um, and when they study all that, then they know whether the market's ready for an event or not. Okay. Now, be before we, you know, uh, 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 part ways today, any last message for your Indian fans? Anything you want to say to them? Um, you know what? I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, we're going to try to build a one billion strong movement to show the UFC that we have uh, a united fan base in the country um, and that the country is ready for this sport to explode, to be the first North American sport to come across into the Indian market, give an alternative to cricket for the people. Um, beat out the NBA, beat out the NFL, beat out MLB, any of these other sports. There's an infrastructure for wrestling, there's an infrastructure for uh, success at, at, at Olympic boxing as well. The country is ready for this, let's show them that. And I appreciate your support for me. Whether you support me or not, support the sport, and, and let's get them out there. Um, and thank you guys so much. I will be on India very soon. Follow me online, um, uh, Instagram, the one Arjun St. Buller. Uh, Twitter, the one uh, underscore ASB, Facebook, Arjun St. Buller, and I appreciate the support. Great. Always great chatting with you, Arjun. Thank you so much for taking out the time, and uh, we wish you all the best, and we hope to talk to you again very soon. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Take care. Cheers. <laughs> So that was Arjun Singh uh, Bullard, a lot to talk about, including the upcoming uh, fight between Daniel Cormier and Derek Lewis, and of course his uh, win over Marcelo Gold, his uh, path forward, uh, what he's been uh, working on, and of course uh, some opinion on Khabib versus Connor as well, and uh, also the UFC plans uh, for coming uh, to India. So, uh, you know, so a lot there uh, that we spoke about and I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, live uh, telecast with uh, Arjun Singh Pullard. MMA India show is always trying to get you uh, the best interviews with the top fighters and we will keep trying to do that. And thank you for tuning in and watching us. We will be back with you soon again. Enjoy UFC 230 this weekend. Take care. Bye.